broken man you Come around and just die in the shade of your head Don't expect you to understand Just keep telling yourself there's no shame They don't know about who we are They don't know about you and I They know about the stars of your eyes Oh, hot blood, love is gonna get you You're the better man You wanna reach for the things that nobody can All you need is to break away, yeah Just keep telling yourself there's no shame They don't know about who we are They don't know about you and I They know blind by the stars of your eyes Your hot blood love is gonna get you Excited about going to Alaska again this year for another drop hunt. Uh, we leave for the airport in about two hours. Uh, our good friend Rick Luffelman is actually sleeping on the couch out in the living room. We gotta leave at about 3 a.m. Uh, I can't wait to get back up there in that beautiful country and just see what 2018 has in store for us. It's bittersweet. It's been a long long year work um, my biggest hope is that Mutt connects with the bull this year he's put in the time the effort and he truly deserves to shoot one of those moose with uh, a bow and arrow so I guess wish us luck Well, we are in Seattle, Washington, uh, on our mid trip up for the 2018 moose hunt. Uh, just got through talking to a guy named Nichols. That was fun. He's from southern Minnesota. He's a dentist, young guy, going on his first moose hunt. He saw us sitting at a bar, wearing what we wear, and saying, "Yeah, you guys don't stick out at all." <laughs> anyway, cool guy. So, Mickles, if you see this on YouTube next year, good luck, pal. Uh, anyway, we are one leg done, and we're about an hour from boarding our next plane. We just paid a $190 bar tab. Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah, life is good. We're, we're going to see how this 2018 season plays out. I don't think we'll top. Andre from last year, Tanner's Bowl, but you never know. We're going back into the same spot, same days of the year. Nobody's been there since we've been there. And we think Gonzo and Lefty will be waiting for us. So stay tuned. Well, it's September 14th, 2018. We're back at the same hotel we were last year. It's about 6 o'clock in the morning, waiting to get picked up. It's uh, about 42 degrees. Looks like a great day for flying. We'll be in the bush. We'll see how this one goes. We'll see if we can equal equal last year's giant moose hunt. 
Hard cases will stay home. Tent and sleeping bags and food bag go in first. And then just some camel bags will go in second with the second guy. Same as last year. his hip boots so he had to throw me off on the, the beaver house but I'm home sweet home that was a cow and a calf down on the south end of the lake flying in don't know if you saw it or not I can't talk to the camera with my helmet on so anyway we're here or I'm here he's got to go back pick another guy up in the bush bring him back to Ninana and then pick up Tanner and get him in so I'll probably see him in a couple three hours just gonna carry the tent up up the hill to our camp and see my buddy in a little bit.
It is 20 after 8 Alaskan time. That's the last I'll see Mark. Well, until Tanner gets back, I guess. But uh, it's a beautiful morning, a little chilly. I think it's probably 30s here. Uh, he saw the other day he flew by and there was two big bulls right here by camp, which is great to hear. Uh, flying in, we did not see a bull a cow and a cat down at the other end of the lake right now. What's up? It's always good, but I'm very excited. Nice to be back in Alaska. Wow, wow, wow. Uh, I guess Roger and Chad Lehman are about 25 miles away from here in another new spot that nobody's been in. So I wish them luck. But here we are. Back on the lake. A little much shot. Well, it's 10.30, just got the tent set up, and here comes Hannah, perfect timing. Again, this is our first day. Just set up the tent, one o'clock in the afternoon. Last year we had a bull walk right through camp. This year we just came out having a piece of jerky tent set up, and a bull walks out on the lake. That was awesome. He looks plenty fifty, but he doesn't have real strong fronts. Tanner thinks he's only got like two points on the left side, and he's kind of cupped. Their palms are cupped. I don't think they're a real mature bull. They're not big and a little laid back flat like a big mature bull, but still fun to see a bull first day, that's for sure. Just taking a little break and there's a bull walks out to the lake. It's awesome. So it's down to the end of day zero. We flew in this morning. I got here at 8.30. Tanner got here at 10.30. Set up. Cow and a calf down here flying in. At one o'clock, we saw, pretty sure it's this bull, come out and take a drink. And now he went around the end of the lake, right at dark, or at eight o'clock, I guess. Tanner picked him up, walked over, and he was down in here, and we called at him, just playing with him, and he wouldn't come up. We figured that cow and calf, and sure enough, now they just walked back out to the lake, walked across the end of the lake. So day zero, we're having a blast. We haven't even picked up the bull yet. You can't, you can't hunt the same day you fly in Alaska, so we're just watching. But there's animals here, just like last year. We, we think this is Sneaky Pete that came up through camp last year. It looks like he's got the same small fronts. He's, we think he's over 50. He's probably legal, but he's got just like long points on, the, on his brows instead of a, a big full paddle, if you will. Anyway. Beautiful day, beautiful sunset, and we're seeing moose already. We start hunting in the morning.
the morning of day one of legal hunting. We're starting at the north end of the lake where we had an encounter with Lefty last year. We call him Lefty because his left brow hangs lower than his right. Another way to tell it's Lefty, he has velvet in his top of his right paddle that he cannot polish clean. It's also where we killed Andre the Giant. There's his meat pole. And look who shows up day one, 2018. They just bedded down and right in front of camp on the lake. After closing the distance of about 300 yards, even though he was quartering away, bedded down, I think we underestimated his peripheral vision. I think he saw me crawling up the shoreline. 
Tanner showed lefty, slutty the decoy, and here he comes. He ends up closing the distance to about, I don't know, 60 yards and cuts up into the timber. It looked like he was going to circle around and be committed. I eventually shoot it for 45 yards. It was closer to 55 or 60. Barely caught the bottom of his body, just a couple of inches. Just being honest. He doesn't even know he's hit. We stop him with a call call a couple of times. And it felt good after a few days to see him back on the lake. Well, it's the morning of day five. We haven't really seen much of anything besides rain and Sneaky Pete. Sneaky Pete seems to show up every morning on the north end of the lake by the beaver dam. Grunton doesn't, he'll respond to calls, but will not commit. He's a good bull. He's mid-50s, but not something that we're looking for in this area. And neither one of us are interested in each other, so we both kind of go our separate ways just about every day. But after about four days of mourning, after Lefty, we hear this bull grunting on the south end of the lake for about a half hour. We walk about a, I don't know, quarter of a mile down the lake and build a little blind. And here comes this bull off the top of the hill. A bull that we call Mac because he comes running down this hill like a Mack truck to our call. And wouldn't you know, there's a cow and a calf standing on the south end of the lake that he's going to run into. As soon as this bull breaks the brush along the lake, Mutt and I both looked at each other and said, that's a shooter bull. This bull's well over 60, big laid back paddles. This is the caliber of bull that we're here in Alaska to hunt.
So even though it's the 19th of September and the rut is in full swing, this bull had to check out these ladies. Right. And thank God for us, this cow and the yearling were not in estrus willing to stand for him. Anyway, thank God for Tanner. He snuck out in front of us and moved slutty, our little decoy, from right to left and got his full attention. He's ready and willing to come and check us out. He's thinking about us. After about a half hour of checking those cows out, he follows them off the end of the lake and decides to come check us out.
but it's middle up and down. Good. I think I'm pretty good. sure he's tipping over up there. <laughs> Talk about a suspense builder. Holy oh, crap. Could he oh, stand I'm, there any longer? Was he there five minutes? I suppose. I, know. <laughs> I was trying to find a hole. <laughs> I think I did. I think you did. Did you hear this bull grunting over here? Yes. Yeah, I'm going, what the heck? Did you see him look? Yes. He looked at that other bull grunt. I don't know if it's Sneaky Pete or what's going on. I don't know who it is. But it's tight to the shoulder. Good. You know? Penetration? He was go gone. Perfect. He's dead. I don't know. I think so. I think he was doing a hot lap on top of that ridge up there. And I think he's laying down. It looked like he circled. Yeah. Like was... I think... I don't know. I think you got him, pal. I think you fucking smoked him. <laughs> fucking shake it. Oh, you're shaking. <laughs> oh, that was... I was so calm, I'm going, I'm going to kill him, I'm going to kill him. You know? Then he's got to get that to, what, the 25 yards? Mm -hmm. Then just stand there for five minutes. Oh, my God. No, it's, it's, it, it's I gone. Didn't, I didn't see it hit. He was so close, they're so big and black. Yep. All I could see is, that's got to be a shoulder, and I waited just a touch second, and, and it let her rip. And yep. It's tight to the shoulder, right mid. Good. And I'm, and I'm, I'm, I think I shot through him. Really? You think you went through him? It disappeared. I never saw a knock or nothing. Because I was trying to see it in the screen and I couldn't see the arrow hit. And I couldn't see it when he you, wheeled. You heard it hit? I heard it hit. Oh, yeah. I heard it hit. It's perfect up and down. I just don't know how tight to the shoulder I am because... Sorry. I don't know. I saw... It looked like his shoulder went through... Through my sight. Yep. And I, 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 I went, there's a hole. I'm, I just held in the hole in the brush. Yep. Oh, I think I held. I, I almost, I almost call called to stop him so you could. That was cool. Holy crap. <laughs> oh. 25? That's what he was at at that tree? Yeah. When he when he stopped, he was like thirty. I I, I hit a, I hit an opening. It was thirty, so I just dropped it to twenty five yep. and let go of it. They're so damn big. It looks like they're closer than that. I know it. I thought he was gonna skirt the edge of the lake and come up next to the decoy, but he cut up in the woods. There's our little moose blind. Alaska. Oh my god. This is actually... This is actually right where we had the encounter with Lefty. I know we didn't talk on camera for a couple of days because we were in mourning because... I was standing right there, Lefty was up in there. And that shot went too low. Uh, I shot it for 45, and it was 55 or 60, and, and it, we didn't get him. So that was, as you probably saw in the video, a giant. That's who we came up here for, Lefty or Gonzo. Uh, so we've seen a bull every day. We've seen Sneaky Pete down by camp. He's probably mid-50s. We saw him again this morning. We came down here. He went on the other end. But this cow and yearling has been here every day. And we got we made this blind and sat here from daylight till dark yesterday. Grunting down here, grunting down there, but this guy never showed up. This is the first we've seen this bull. We call him Mac, because he come down through the woods like a Mac truck this morning. Uh, if you see the video. But he checked out that cow and yearling all morning. And he for sure saw us. We were grunting at him. Tanner actually went out and moved slutty, and he saw that, that she was... Finally, he just gave up on them, and, well, the rest is history. We haven't went and looked for him yet. We just shot 10 minutes ago. We're going to give him a half an hour, and, but it looked like he got to the top of this hill and did some kind of a little death circle, so... It looks real good. Please. I can't go through two of them. <laughs>
I don't know about you guys, but I think I just watched my best friend kill a moose <laughs> with a bow. Oh. It's painted red. There he is, baby! <laughs> thank you, Lord. Thank you, Tanner. Thank you, Alaska. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, man. Want to see him? Oh, let's go look at him. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Congrats, pal. Thank you. Good bull. For sure. Good bull. He's got an old wound there. Yeah, he does. What the hell? I don't know what that is. That's where mine came out. He was slightly quartering to us. Yeah. It went in right tight behind the shoulder, come out right there. We got us an Alaska. You got him, pal. Down. Great shot. I'm so happy Thanks, for you. Pal. It ain't lefty, but he's big. Mac is on the ground. Mac is on the ground. Yeah, baby. Watched them all morning and it just came together. Oh. He come roaring down that hill, running down the hill at those cows. Checked them over for a half an hour and came to us. Thanks, Dan.
it's September 19th, 2018. We've been back in the spot since Tanner killed Andre the Giant last year for five days. We had an encounter with a bull that we were, one of the bulls we were after Lefty the first day, but that didn't pan out. We think he's all right. Uh, we've been sitting in this blind on the middle of the lake. We tried it on the north end a couple of nights. The only bull that we saw was uh, bull we call Sneaky Pete. He's probably how wide? He's probably pushing 50 this year. Yeah, he's close to a 50 inch bull but we didn't have any interest in him. We were still looking for Gonzo or Lefty. Uh, we had a couple of days of, of rain. We sat here in the rain yesterday all day. The only bull we saw was Sneaky Pete crossed again down on the north end. Uh, Andy did again this morning. We were down here at 6.30 this morning. By 7 he went across, but we had another bull grunting down on the south end. We had a cow and a yearling out on the lake. And it took, I don't know, an hour? Probably an hour before we saw him. Probably an hour before he finally showed up. And this is Mac. We're coming down that hill on a dead run like, like a Mack truck, just plowing trees over. Showed out on the lake. He just checked out that cow and yearling for half an hour or so. Tanner went out and actually moved our decoy. He moved Sleddy across and he was watching while we were calling so he knew we were here. He stayed with those girls for another 20 minutes till we couldn't see him anymore and then here he come down the edge of the lake. He checked them out long enough that here he come. Well, he ended up, if you saw the video, he ended up walking within 25 yards of us, broadside. He, of course, he had to get my heart racing. He stood there for six minutes at 30 yards, quartering to us, too much brush to shoot for six minutes. Just, to, just, he's a little, likes the camera, I think, I don't know. Anyway, finally he stepped out in the open. I stood up and took the shot and fortunately put it right where it belonged. A baby went a hundred yards and tipped over. It's, it was picture perfect. Great morning. A little bit of rain while we were uh, butchering, but we actually got him into meat sacks and made a meat pole in a little over four hours, just like last year. And rib meat and everything, and all the meat come out first and carried the horns out last. So can't thank Tanner enough. Did a great job calling. Brought him right in, just like last year. Went great. And we're Tanner and Mutt Wilson from Wisconsin, for you strangers. Uh, thanks for subscribing. Anything? No, nope. just I know that he put a hell of a shot on it after five minutes of that bull staring him in the face. I don't know how anybody can hold it together that long. But yeah. He put a hell of a shot on him. Good clean kill. Hell of an animal. 64 wide? 64 wide, yeah. We haven't put a tape on him to see what he scores, but uh, 64 inches. He's a big bull, for sure. Yeah, very happy. And Dan? So, so, now it's my turn. I get to hunt. <laughs> so we got six, five days left? Yep. Five days left. No, six. Six days left, yep. Six days left. Closes the 25th, so we got six more days to try and get another one on the ground, so we're hoping to fill up our tags this year, so. That'd be great. They're here. There's when we were butchering this one there was another bull grunting down here on the lake. We were only 100, 125 yards off the lake and there was one grunting on the other side. So he's got high hopes that he'll get one as well. See what happens. To be continued. Is it a grizzly? See a hump? 
Yep. But the fucking grizzly. Ooh. He just shook off. That's not good. I think he was, I don't know if he took a swim or... Well, let's just put a new spin on things. Yes, it did. So the day after that we shoot Mac, we sat down on the south end of the lake in the rain all day. We just get back to camp. We left Slutty out at the water's edge for the next morning. We knew it was a good spot, a lot of grunting, and look who finds Slutty. Oh, he's, he's running. Saw, he saw Slutty and didn't like it. No wonder we haven't seen any moose. Right. He stopped 30 yards behind. Yep, now we go on again. Making a bunch of noise. He stopped again. Now he's going. It's a grizzly. We just saw our first grizzly in Alaska. I didn't get a good look at him. And there's stakes right there. <laughs> there's a good chance. There's a good chance he's going to come around the lake and find that carcass, was it, which is only 200, 200 yards. yards south of the tent. But it had a hump, and it was brown. So now it's a couple of days after we shot Mac. The predators have moved in. We've got Baloo across the lake, 200 yards from the meat bowl, smelling it, wondering when he's going to come to our side of the lake. We also are going to start having wolves behind the tent.
Well, after all that commotion, Tanner didn't quite connect on the wolf. And we were worried about the meat pole and the meat and the cape, and Mark just picked them up. It's uh, Sunday the 23rd, and there goes my horns. Well, after an interesting evening at camp, we decided that the wolves and grizzly had more than likely chased the moose out of the area. So we decided we'd go sit on the moose carcass to see if we could get a shot at a wolf. After about four hours of sitting on the carcass, two pups finally came in to feed, one black wolf and one gray wolf. But we decided not to take a shot at the pups, hoping to get a shot at an adult later in the evening. But they, we were not successful. The adults didn't seem comfortable coming in during the daylight. This area that we're hunting in Alaska is actually a predator control area, which means that any hunter can actually shoot up to 10 wolves without a license. So you don't have to use your moose tag to put on a wolf if you wanted to shoot one, whether that's resident or non-resident. It's just basically unlimited amount of wolves if you Well, it's September 25th, the last day of moose season. The wolves have driven the moose away, the big ones anyway. So we decided to move the trail camera up on the carcass to see if we could get a little night footage of the wolves coming in, feeding. So the following afternoon, we decided to go sit on the carcass. And about two hours before dark, this grizzly that we'd been seeing around the lake the last few days decided to come walking up the hill behind us heading for the carcass. He must have winded us and took off running past us. I suppose he was within 30 yards of us. The wind was howling so we couldn't hear him walking up behind us until he took off running.
he didn't like that we were there, so he circled downwind of us a few different times and then disappeared into the brush between us and camp. There's no doubt that he'd be back after dark to claim the carcass.
Alaska. was laying up here. Well, there goes Mutley.
Well, he just flew mud out. I got about an hour and a half yet before he comes back. Got the tent, gear, sleep bag, just in case for whatever reason he doesn't get back in, but it's only about noon, so shouldn't be a problem getting me out today. So, I'm Well, it's the end of 2018 moose season here in Alaska. We had another amazing adventure. Um, we were able to take one giant moose with a bow again this year. Um, we weren't successful with the second one. We kind of had some pretty bad weather out of, I think, 13 days. It rained for nine of them, and two of the days you can't hunt. So basically 11 days, nine of them rained. So the weather kind of played a little bit of a role in the second half after we shot one. So otherwise, we did have a couple other bulls hanging around, but nothing in the caliber that we wanted to shoot. So we also had some uh, carnivore activity, as you've seen. Uh, some wolves and a grizzly bear moved in, so that was interesting. Put a new spin on this spot for us because we've never seen a wolf or a bear in this area, so that kind of changed the tone a little bit here over on our little honey hole we got down here. So, anyway, we had a great year. It doesn't sound like we're probably going to hang up uh, moose hunting and move on to a different species and see what else Alaska has to offer. We're talking maybe caribou next year in a different spot and then in 2020 we're actually signed up for a brown bear hunt so we'll see what that has in store for us. Uh, one last thing I've been meaning to do on this trip um, a few years ago uh, my grandpa Doug Voss passed away too soon and uh, I guess after the funeral processions uh, my mom gave me some of his ashes because we had him cremated so I've been debating on what to do with Grandpa Doug if I put him in an urn and he sits on my mantle for the rest of my days and his days or if I spread him somewhere special that's dear to my heart like Alaska so I thought what better place than the middle of the Alaskan bush so he loved his loved nothing more than his family and grandchildren and great-grandchildren he loved to sing and dance so I'm hoping that between the wolves and the moose and the birds maybe they can sing you a tune once in a while so I'm gonna lay a small piece of you to rest in Alaska pal they say love is more precious than gold 